applications. Um, if you've called in, but you would like to view uh, the presentation slides and be able to interact, please go to madisonplan.nashville.gov and click the event link so you can join through your computer. If you are um, only calling in, you'll be able to listen, but you won't be able to um, ask questions live during the meeting. So this is only the second time we've done a virtual community meeting, so bear with us as we get started, work out some kinks. Um, along with myself, we have a few other folks from the planning department and ITS that you can see as panelists. We also have council member Van Reese and uh, applicants who are asking for changes. Some of us are presenting information in details, but all of us will be able to answer questions. So um, let's go over a few meeting logistics. Everyone except the presenters have their audio muted and will remain muted throughout the meeting. There are two ways to ask questions. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it now, but then there'll be another slide after that that goes into more detail. One is to use the Q&A panel on your screen and type your question in. You can do that at any time during the meeting as you think of something and we'll respond when we get to that portion. The other way is to actually raise your virtual hand to be unmuted in order to verbally ask your question. Now, reminder, if you've only joined through the phone, you don't have the option to do that, but my contact information is at the end of the presentation. You can contact me directly. Um, we're gonna record this meeting too, so you can share it with others that might wanna watch it uh, at a later date on Planning's YouTube channel. So here is one way that some of you may be seeing uh, to ask a question, like I said previously, you uh, can click on this and type your question in, or you could raise your, your um, virtual hand if you're attending the meeting, or it might look something like this, attendee, and you can do it this way, okay? <clears throat> so um, I did wanna mention one thing. As you can see, there's uh, under attendee, there's one. So you can see the names of all the panelists. But uh, like on this slide, you can see like all the names, but if you're an attendee, we as panelists can see you, but if you're an attendee, you can only see yourself. So don't think you're the only person on the call because there are more people. So to talk a little bit about why we're here, I'm gonna describe the purpose of the meeting, provide some brief background information on community planning in Nashville, how policy and zoning are different, then we'll discuss the proposed changes and explain how the process works through the planning commission and with the associated request to rezone. The applicants will briefly describe their request and we'll open it up for questions and discussion. There'll be plenty of time for questions and ways for follow-up questions and information to be shared. <clears throat> this is a planning department initiated meeting in order to explain two requested changes to the Madison community plan and hear from the community on the, the desire and appropriateness of these requests. The first policy change is for property at 1201 South Raycroft within the red outline shown on the right side of your screen. The second policy change is for an area of the Good Pasture School campus within the red outline shown on the left side of the screen. The input received at this meeting weighs heavily into planning's recommendation to the Planning Commission. We will be listening and making notes on the questions and comments we received tonight. So let's just briefly take a look to orient ourselves. So here's the first request, 1201 South Graycroft, an existing house. It's located on the southeast corner of South Graycroft and West to West. So here the image flips and you're looking south. So here's South Graycroft, and here's West to West, and then here is the site, and then this is a picture of the house. The next area is the Good Pasture portion of the Good Pasture School Campus. So here you see the area adjacent to I-65, West to West. Same thing here, just a different aerial photo. Once again, this flips it, so here's West to West, and here's Interstate 65, and here's the school campus and the Metro Solar Farm. So a bit of background. Since the late 1980s, Nashville has used community plans as a means of applying the countywide general long range plan. Today it's called Nashville Next. Within Nashville Next are 14 community plans that are specific to the issues and needs of each community. 
These community plans guide where development and preservation should occur in each community. You see a star where the Madison Community Plan area is. These plans are created with the community, adopted by the Planning Commission, and updated with the community. We use land use policy, which addresses the form and character of development in order to implement the vision established in the community plan. Every property in Nashville has a land use policy, also referred to as community character policy. Each policy is defined in a document called the community character manual. These policies are the standard which we measure future zone change requests against. Here's a tool that we use in order to describe our policies, the transect. It's a tool for understanding and guiding the various development patterns of a region from the most rural T1 open space, areas like Bells Bend, Beeman Park, Warner Parks, natural, no development, to the most intensely developed area of Davidson County, downtown. You can see in these pictures the character of the natural and built environments of each transect, and highlighted is the T3 suburban transect, which applies to this part of Madison. Policy is important because it's the guidance that rezoning requests are measured against. If a rezoning request is supported by an existing policy, there's a higher likelihood that the Planning Commission will recommend approval. If it's not supported by the existing policy, then Planning Commission is unlikely to recommend approval. So an applicant may apply to change a policy to support the rezoning request, that's amending the community plan and why we're here tonight. We always like to emphasize that community plans are not stagnant documents. People have the ability to request changes and there's a public process. In this case, both applicants are requesting zone changes to zonings that are not supported by the existing policy. So along with their two rezoning requests, they're also requesting to change the land use policies. Policies provide guidance and represent the vision for an area Applying a policy change with a plan amendment does not change the current zoning. Zoning is law, a set of regulations that control the physical development of land, including land use, building heights, density setbacks, parking, landscaping, access, and signage. And as mentioned before, zoning is influenced by the policies in the community plans. So here's a map of the policies. You see the two proposed properties outlined in red that are asking to change their land use policies. Both properties currently have residential policies in place that don't allow for other uses. The Graycroft property wants to change to transition. This would provide a transition area between the large district employment center policy and the surrounding residential neighborhood maintenance policy. Move over to the Good Pasture School campus and they want to extend the district employment center to cover this portion of their property. In a minute, we'll hear from both applicants and get more details, but I wanna talk just a bit about some of the factors that we look at uh, when we review applications. One part is guidance from various planning documents, and that includes those from other Metro departments like parks and public works. We also look at the area's locational characteristics and access, and community sentiment plays a large part. Tentatively, this is the timeline. Both these applications are tracking for the July 23rd Planning Commission meeting. That means that staff, we write staff reports and post them next Friday week from tomorrow. The timeline is always subject to change though. And so we always say to check our uh, department website prior to Planning Commission as the date gets closer to make sure the application is actually on that agenda. So now we can hear from the applicants. Um, Sean and Brent, you wanna go first? Yeah, Anita, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, if uh, if you don't mind, would you would you uh, please pull up the zoning map uh, for that intersection of Due West and and Graycroft? Oh, I don't have a zoning map. Uh, this is what I have. Okay, just the policy map. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Horst, uh, who's on this call, Brent Horst is an attorney, as am I, and uh, he came to me last summer and said, hey, Sean, you know, I've, I've, I've owned this corner property, which is a small home uh, for a couple of years now. And I really would like to relocate my office, my law office from downtown Nashville. And, and his law office is in the UBS tower downtown 
uh, next to the courthouse, and he desires to relocate his law office to this property uh, that he owns, and is a, the home itself there is, it's about, in size, it's about 2,000 square feet, and uh, adjacent to it is the office neighborhood uh, zoning district, and as you can see on this policy map, it, it's part of that district employment center adjacent to his property. And so the thought was that it, it seemed to make sense from a zoning standpoint uh, to, uh, to expand that zoning boundary onto this property, but this property was left in a residential uh, zoning, excuse me, a residential policy category. And so in, in talking with staff about the appropriate policy for this corner, the transition policy was one that, that was uh, suggested to look into and this is the intersection of two major arterial boulevards, mm -hmm. uh, which is a locational criteria for the transition policy. And, and that policy is also intended to minimize land use conflicts while providing opportunities for small scale offices. And so the predominant use in, a, in this type of policy area is a small scale office. And that's exactly what he's proposing to do uh, he would leave the home in, in its current configuration, and the zoning that's being requested would 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 limit that opportunity to expand it to no more than 2,500 square feet anyway. So there's really not not sufficient uh, room or permission in the requested zoning district to do anything other than a small scale office. So for those reasons, we think the transition policy at this location between District Employment Center and the suburban neighborhood maintenance policy to the north and to the east makes good sense at this at this major intersection. Okay, good. Brent, do you have anything to add or are you good? Okay. We'll go on to um, uh, Anita. If I could, if I could just chime in in between, that'd be great. Um, first of all, I just want to welcome everybody. This is Council Member Nancy Van Rees. Uh, I appreciate all the work that the Planning uh, Department has done to provide this presentation um, in this format, and uh, uh, the ability to talk about two different things at the same time, or actually technically four different things at the same time. Um, so uh, I want to make sure that everyone knows that if there's questions afterward uh, regarding the second layer of this discussion, which is the zoning that would uh, request that would come in uh, simultaneously with the policy changes, and I'm, I'm all open uh, to hear from you on that. Um, we've done a lot of um, online communication about this particular, the blue house on the corner uh, that we've talked a lot about. And I wanted to publicly uh, thank um, Brent Horst, who is the owner of the property, for cleaning it up. I mean, it was it was quite a mess before he purchased the property, um, and I know that um, uh, that speaks volumes to the neighborhood as to the type of uh, business that you would keep. I know that uh, Brent is also a neighbor and uh, lives within walking distance of this location and so um uh, is also a constituent so thank you brent for uh, you, uh, doing something in in our neighborhood that makes sense um so i just wanted to uh, welcome everybody um overall uh, but also uh, let you know that um, the uh, policy uh, change in regard uh, to this location as well as the zoning change has my support and uh, i look forward to additional feedback Okay, thank you, council member. So, Good Pasture, you wanna talk a little bit about what you wanna do? Yeah, okay. Um, hi, I'm James Dillard, and I'm the Director of Development at Good Pasture Christian School. And I wanted to kind of bring you up to speed what we've been through and why we're here. A uh, uh, decision was made by the board and uh, that we would look at putting some billboards by Interstate 65 um, on our western side of the property. And in doing so, we started talking with the planning department and codes, and we found out that the zoning that the property currently has um, or land use policy first uh, has would not uh, support the type of zoning we need, which is a commercial service type zoning. 
So what we did is uh, work with the planning department to say, okay, the land use policy needs to be at least the district employment center type policy, which our current uh, buildings on the campus are. And to get the western side to that district uh, employment center would be the move we need to make for the land use policy. And then that would uh, support the type zoning that we need for uh, the sign locations that we're trying to get. And those uh, uh, sign locations would be zoned then to a uh, commercial service type zoning. And it's not uh, all this red area that we have is just kind of changing the land use policy for all that, but we're only looking at the locations being somewhere maybe in 60 by 60 uh, that would have the CS zoning, commercial service zoning on it. So it makes it, uh, it's not the whole area gonna be rezoned to a commercial. But uh, then that would give us the opportunity to put uh, billboard type signs uh, by the interstate. Okay, thank you. Uh, so now, uh, if I can, I can chime in uh, again, Anita. Uh, times, can you, if you could chime in again, if you can go back to that last slide. Um, uh, just chiming in again in regard to um, a good pasture. Uh, uh, it goes without saying uh, how important an institution, good pasture, Christian schools is to the South Madison community and the community at large. Uh, one of the things that makes it a jewel is the fact that they're able to keep tuition rates down for excellent um, education. And in, uh, in an effort to be able to continue to provide um, schooling that is uh, affordable, um, they're, they're wisely looking at opportunities to be able to kind of monetize some of the property that they have. And I think this is a really good way for them to be able to do this. Uh, this will be uh, a couple of billboards facing I-65. Um, there, there won't uh, be any light um, overlay. Uh, you'll only see them if you're driving on 65. Um, it, it's not going to bother the Silver Park at all for them to be there. Uh, and uh, by doing so, uh, they'd they be able to uh, keep tuition rates down. And so um, this uh, uh, policy change in order to have the zoning change also has my support and uh, I look forward to feedback. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna open it up for questions and discussion. Remember, a couple ways. Raise your hand if you're joining through the computer or uh, use the Q&A drop down menu. It may be, depending on your setup, it may be in different positions on your screen. So, um, Stephanie, do we have any questions? No, ma'am, no questions as of yet. And also a reminder, if you're not speaking as a panelist, go ahead and mute yourself so we can get some of that noise down a little bit. Yep. Good, because we are hearing, we're hearing some feedback. Good, yeah. thanks for that reminder. Um, okay, let's see. Um, yes, no, you, we, I've had people text me, feedback, feedback, yes. <laughs> uh, we read each other's minds. Okay, so we can still, um, if anyone has a question, you wanna raise your hand, raise your virtual hand. You can raise your virtual hand or also type it into the Q&A box that should be below the participants panel in on the right side of your screen. Okay, and while people are doing that, uh, please feel free to go ahead and ask your questions if you want to. We just have, a, if you wanna take a survey and provide feedback, um, here's a link to a, to a survey. You can scan the QR code um, as I mentioned, the Planning Commission meeting is tentatively scheduled for July 23rd. And uh, if you did call in and aren't able to ask your questions live, here's my email address, anita.mckeg at nashville.gov, and my phone number. So you can call and chat with me or send me an email with your questions and we'll get answers for you. Um, Anita, I will... Uh... 
I will also put on the uh, District 8 uh, Facebook page and Twitter account the link to the survey so that um, the folks from the neighborhood associations have that um, and, uh, and also post um, this final video um, along with you. Um, I, I've just done a, another quick look and we have had uh, 905 um, unique impressions um, uh, notifying uh, for this meeting. So uh, I, I know we've kind of talked about it as it was coming up. Uh, we received some feedback uh, that was all positive um, as early as a month ago about this. And so if there are questions remaining, I'm sure that we'll get them taken care of. But I'm looking at who the, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at who the attendees are. And um, I believe I, I've, I've spoken to most of them already directly. Um, but uh, I know we have a business owner on the line, uh, Ricky Perry, also from Good Pasture is with us. Um, I know that there was somebody from the South Madison Neighborhood Association uh, that was going to call in. So if there are any questions or if you just want to be recognized of, of having attended, uh, feel free to do that. Wonderful, thank you, council member. As we were talking earlier, um, both applicant teams have reached out to people and have been communicating with people for a while. Just as the council member said, she has notified and talked with people too. So if you're listening to this me meeting at a later date, it's uh, reflective of all the outreach that's already happened as to why we don't have a lot of questions and a lot of people asking more details tonight. Okay, so anything else? You think we're you think we're good to go for tonight? Yeah, I'm I'm good. Everybody, uh, wear your masks. Stay out of trouble. Uh, only go out if you have to. Yeah, as one of my coworkers said, uh, Corona free. Sidekicks is still delivering. So go ahead. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate Thank you, everyone. It. Thank you very much. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.net.